Hello again, everyone. Zach and Tech is here by Attack Line now. For this Monday, September 19th, 2016. Hope everyone had a fun weekend. I did add some fun goods. I was supposed to have three, ended up having two. The final two are my summer tour, my summer escapade two tour, the Attack Experience. I'm subtitling it. Inspired by the Prince album, The Goat Experience. Very underrated, by the way. Check it out if you get a chance. Um. We had the first gig being Special Needs Dance at Washington Senior Center, Washington Township, Michigan. And I haven't done a Special Needs in two months. And I've been DJing there for the last couple of years, and the attendance has been up and down. You know, it's been like, like 100 people. I, I think the most we've had was like 120 people. And this past Friday, we only like 30 people. And it's kind of my fault because I'm not there every month now. I, I pick and choose which ones I'm available. So I always pick. The months that I don't have any Friday conflicts. Because it's the third Friday of every month. So I'm like, okay. I know I have a gig on this third Friday of this month. I can call it off. And they don't leave my name on there. I'm usually advertised. But it just say DJ Music. So it's like, we don't know. The people don't know who's going to be there every month. If it's me or another guy. So it's like, it's been up and down. But it was still a fun show. People had a good time. We had some familiar faces and new faces too. They dance a lot sooner, too. You know, there's new people involved. Dance a lot sooner. There's a line dance and all that. And I usually this this like this portion, I have karaoke portion, where I have people sing their regular music with the music turned, with the vocals turned down. They get to sing. And there was this new girl that was there who was really good. I think her name was Alyssa. Was really good singer. I was very impressed by her. And she danced a little, everybody. So it was a great night. Uh, I was supposed to have two gigs at Westview this weekend to finish up my finale weekend. Uh, I was supposed to do it on on Saturday, but the last two weeks have been the same at Westview. Sunday's better. Saturday sucked for weather. Rained again all day. It was so bad. Emissions to get in was closed, so no one came in the back. So my dad took over till two. I canceled. Like I have a playlist for him, so they hey, play play my music duty. On a playlist, I'm going home. Like, why, why do I need to be there in the cold and it's raining all day and no one's going to be here at all? So Sunday yesterday was not just the best day of the weekend, the only good day of the weekend, but also best week, best day of the season at Westview. Uh, I've been DJing there for three weeks now. You know, first week was Labor Day weekend. We had an okay crowd. Last week was decent. But this week was like the first day where it was like, wow. It was the... It was the first day where it felt like, oh, it's a normal Westview day. You know, like, everything was going. It was nice weather. It's the best crowd we've had. The best amount of people we've had. Like, like 300 people came. We usually get, like, a 1,000 on good days. And they're coming. This is the start of it right here. This past Sunday being the end of my summer tour. So thank you for Westview. And thank you to everyone that I DJed for this past summer for my summer dates. Uh, I got my back to school tour and my new tour attacking the holidays starting this weekend. Back to school is Friday at Hevel for back to school party. I was supposed to do a color one for Have on the 24th, but that got called off. So all I got on the 24th is two gigs to kick off my attacking the holidays tour, as I call it, at Westview and at a show, the fifth year in a row for the fall event for Wiley Hells Hall. It's going to be a fun show and back at Westview Sunday. Now on with the entertainment news for the weekend. So let me make your number ones. Well, still, number one movie, it's Sully with 22 million. Well, the other movies that came out this week, Blair Witch and Bridget Jones' Baby, especially going up against Sully. Whoop. <laughs> Blair Witch Bombs. Yay! 17 year old bullshit bombs! Yay! With only 9 million, Bridget Jones' baby, also 10 year old stuff, only made 8 million. So, there you go. Not much competition, Sully retains. But more remakes on that way with the Magnificent Seven coming out this week and Storks. It looks stupid, Storks will win. So I'm Sorry, Denzel, but you will get shot down by the storks. Now, Billboard number ones. Uh, third number one album in the world for Jason Aldean. His album, They Don't Know. With him withholding his album on streaming services like Tidal, 
and Spotify and all that stuff. It helped pure album sales with 138 total with 131 pure album sales. Uh, Old Dirt New Boots and Night Train that both debuted the number one. So like I said, third straight number one album for Jason Aldean. Where we have another new number one album. Still number one single on a Hot 100 for the fifth week. Closer, The Chainsmokers and Halsey. Well, Justin Bieber's new song, Let Me Love You with DJ Snake, gets in the top 10. I haven't heard it yet. Interested in seeing it. Uh, Gaga goes to song, Perfect Delusion. I don't think it's... I don't think it made much of an impact on the charts yet. Or oh, it did. Yeah, it did. It did debut this week at number 15. Because the video comes out tonight during Screen Queens. So if you guys see your new number one album, Jason Aldean, and still number one single, Chainsmokers. Because Gaga got, got left out of the nominations for the Emmys, which took place last night. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel hosted it, and I think Jimmy did a decent job. Uh, dialogue, the monologue with a lot of Trump jokes. Blaming Mark Burnett for the Trump phenomenon because he produced a celebrity apprentice. And he had a great interaction with Matt Damon. That was funny. After Jimmy Kimmel lost best variety talk show to John Oliver's show. Last week with John Oliver. So that was like one of the funniest segments of the night. What was emotional was Julia Lou Dreyfus announcing her father died when she won best actress in a comedy series. Again, as her series Veep dominated the comedy field yet again. Despite Jeffy Temple winning for Transparent, and Transparent winning a lot of awards too, Veep was the big winner, winning Best Comedy Series, as well as, uh, I think it won like, a lot of like technical awards too, either doing this show or doing the Creative Arts Emmys last week. So, But not only did Veep take hold on the Comedy Awards, a lot of big victories for HBO in general, especially in the drama department. Game of Bones is now the most awarded drama ever in Emmy history. 38. 38 awards. Not just the most awarded drama, but also the most awarded show, period. Being the record held by Frazier. 37. So, big night for Game of Bones, winning a bunch of awards, including Best Drama Series. And winning, uh... A lot of technical awards, best directing for a drama series, best writing for a drama series, among others. HBO winning six awards, not just from Game of Thrones and Veep, like together they won. But also, and also John Oliver won too, so big night for HBO. Uh, USA won an award, despite Mr. Warbot losing best drama series, despite it winning at the Golden Globes. Rami Malek won Best Lead Actor in the Drama Series, making up for the fact his co-star, who won the Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor, didn't get a nomination at all. And Martin lost again, not just comedy, but also Best Supporting Actor, with Louis Anderson, who's still alive, beating Ty Burrell. And even Kate McKinnon, winning Best Supporting Actress, SNL. Other big wins, especially in the TV miniseries or movie, The People vs. O.J. Simpson swept the board, winning Outstanding Limited Series, winning Outstanding Lead Actor in a Limited Series or Movie, Courtney B. Vance, beating Cuba Gooding Jr., Sarah Paulson, winning for her role as Marshall Clark on the series, Sterling K. Brown, winning Supporting Actor in a Limited Series or Movie, the only award it lost wasn't even nominated for was supporting leading supporting actors in a limited series of movie with Regina King winning. And also losing outstanding directing. Uh Variety. Amy Schumer lost, but Comedy Central won. He and Peel won. Best sketch series. It probably won because it's his last season, but Amy will probably win again. But the biggest upset for many beehivers was Beyonce getting swept out of the Emmys, losing the technical awards. And losing best special to James Corden. I say, Fuck you, Beyonce, you deserve it! From a Madonna fan who deserves 
who thinks that she doesn't deserve to have more bee babies than Madonna? So, there you go. The beehive, whenever someone fucks with Beyonce, you're going to get trolled. Especially the people that won Best Directing for a Variety Special. The guys from Greece, Live, won it. And they got trolled by the beehive. That's what happens when Beyonce's minions aren't happy with her. Their beloved God doesn't win. Save it for Jesus. When he loses. So, there you go. Beyonce deserves to get swept out. Amy Schumer didn't deserve to get swept out either, but Beyonce deserved it more. So, uh, there you go. Now, on with an update on a news article I mentioned on Thursday's attack line. As I was making the attack line on Thursday, the Prince tribute was not announced yet, and a lot of fans were getting concerned about it. It was a month before the show, which was scheduled for October 13th at U.S. Bank Stadium, which did have a halftime show tribute to Prince during the game between the Packers and the Vikings last night, and a powerful one from what I saw on the internet. But with, but with no information, there was no ticket information, not even a contract signed by U.S. Bank Stadium, making Prince fans concerned, especially those who were already making plans. But just minutes after I made the attack line and put it up on YouTube, the concert was finally properly announced. It will still take place October 13th, but now it will be no longer in Minneapolis, in a stadium. To provide better opportunities, it will be now at St. Paul at the XL Energy Center. Especially when people complaining about the sound at the stadium. Too bad it couldn't be a Target Center because it's a SEA concert going on. A lot of Prince diehards are very disappointed that a lot of names are missing. Sheila E's not involved, as she already mentioned. And no evolution. Hopefully they'll be added. Alongside Stevie Wonder, Shaka Khan, Christina Aguilera added because Irving Azoff got involved in the promotion. I mentioned it on Thursday. Some of his clients are in it. Along with John Mayer, Tori Kelly. Hopefully she doesn't do another duet with Stevie Wonder like she did at BET and failed. Anita Banker, Morris Day in the Time. The touring band, I think a lot of people would have ever seen the original seven with Jimmy Jam and all of them. Bilal did a wonderful tribute BET Awards, Judith Hill, Dougie Fresh, Mick Condition, Luke James, and Inner Sucker members besides Morris Day, Liv Warfield, the MPG, and members of Third Eye Girl being the backing band. No, uh, Jonay. I wish mean, she was involved. Damn, what's her name? What's her first name? Janelle Jonelle. Yeah, she should have been involved in this tribute too. Uh, the tickets were on sale this morning, starting as cheap as $19.99 and sold out within minutes at the Exo Energy Center as scalpers got them up quickly and put them up on StubHub for ridiculous prices. But a lot of people may be willing to pay that much because, hey, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. It's not football seats that would have been cool about having the tribute act. The new stadium for Vikings. The green seats at this axel because it's the home of the Minnesota Wild hockey team. So there you go. Prince Tribute Concert that was in Jeopardy is on for October 13th with tickets going on sale today for the show at Axel Energy Center. Selling out in minutes. Now on to a band that will be in Minneapolis on their new tour. Fun a mother fucking Lee. I mean... Wait, I think I have many fans of this band have been waiting for weeks about them announcing their North American tour dates. They've been doing some festival dates in Europe. They're going on a European fall arena tour. We knew they were touring America next year. Then we finally got the tour dates in America for the Red Hot Chili Peppers on their getaway war tour. The U.S. link will kick off on January 5th at San Antonio, Texas before zipping through in 24 dates, America. Uh, it'll end on March 18th in Vancouver. In between, we're going to see them in not just Houston, but Dallas, Houston, New Orleans, Memphis, I mentioned Minneapolis, uh, Toronto, Boston, Buffalo, LA. Although there's no information on whether or not people that got shafted out of seeing the Chili Peppers doing K Rock Sweetie Wells will receive any discounts. Because Chili Peppers pulled out of Whitney Wells for the K Rock radio station last minute. Uh, they will be here 
Uh, Joe Louis Arena on February 2nd. Here in Detroit. I'm going to that. Uh, opening for them is a man who's been opening up for Hall Notes all summer. Trombone Shorty in Orleans Avenue. They'll be opening up for the entire tour. Well, only on the January dates, Trombone will be joined with fellow opener and former Red Hot Chili Peppers drummer Jack Irons and former Paul Jam drummer. Or is he current Paul Jam drummer? But Jack Irons will only be on the January dates. Trombone Chili will be on the entire leg. Uh, there will be new dates added because a lot of fans are not happy. There was no Nashville date, no Atlanta date. So they'll probably add those later. There's a Memphis date, as I mentioned. And uh, at least they, uh, they, didn't, they announced a Detroit date because on the last tour, on the first leg of dates, first set of dates, Detroit wasn't announced until the second set of dates were announced. So I'm happy Chili Peppers announced Detroit from the get go. And like on the European leg, everybody who buys a ticket will have a choice of a physical or a digital copy of the new album to get away. That's the thing now. People get the albums for free from bands with tickets. Duran Duran did it. Tom Petty did it. Prince was the first one to do it. Come on. Prince is the innovator of giving away CDs to people who walk in the door for his concerts. So there you go. Tickets go on sale this Friday for most of the tour dates. I think some are going on sale later. But Detroit's going on sale Friday too. Pre-sale is Thursday, which I'm participating in. I got ways to do it. Live Nation app. I'm on mailing list, so pre-sale, baby. So I'll reach the higher ground in February when that Red Hot Chili Peppers arrive in Detroit as part of the Getaway Tour U.S. leg. That is it for the tag line. Thank you so much for watching. That mind, you've been attacked by the news from Zach. See ya, yeah.